Who do you write to when you're asked the inevitable question? The one involving three words that could either be referring to 13 days ago or 13 years. I find myself wanting to address the more recent me. The one I could possibly save some heartache with a slight shift in perspective. She's on the cusp of 30. The child of immigrants, mother from Cambodia, father from Nigeria. Tired eldest daughter, middle child. Newlywed who's married to the love of her life and the most supportive, honest person she knows. She's also a shadow artist who's worked at her family business for the last 15 years. Putting out art on the side, but that art on the side is now gaining traction and it's all she can think about. She's terrified to take the leap, but won't tell you that. Her terrified looks like doing the same things, hoping she'll get a different result. Yeah, let's write to her. You are trained to wait for permission, praised for shrinking, rewarded for following orders. I know you'd love to believe this isn't the case, but it leaks off your language and underscores your every decision. You come from a long line of powerful women. Women who hid grains of rice in the corner of houses during the Khmer Rouge. Women who fed the entire village with whatever they willed their gardens to grow during the Biafran War. Women who fled to Thailand on foot and cleaned houses and changed diapers and pushed paperwork and took care of everyone and everything until their very last exhale. All that power with no real freedom, taught to sacrifice and comply in order to survive. That's why you naturally play at artists. The one thing you were born to be with one hand dutifully tied behind your back, chained by cultures that crown incompetent sons over any deserving daughters. And you've tried to kneel. Try to convince yourself that the people around you could design a life you could happily live. That they were looking out for your best interest, your well-being. You nodded as they preached you be practical, be patient, be grateful, be obedient. But kneeling hasn't served you. And making their fears your own won't save you. And no matter how hard you try to silence the call to create, the voice only grows louder. And I hope as you're reading this, you can hear nothing else. I'm not writing to warn you or tell you what's going to happen, but I can tell you there is no hack, no cheat code, no way around. Every day, you'll have to go to war with your conditioning. You'll have to fight the false idea that you're only deserving if someone says you are, that you're lazy, undisciplined, uninspired, that you were born to be some passenger. You have to forge a new identity through unapologetic action towards that which you deem worthy. And remember that in your hands, are always two options. Comfortable diminishment or uncomfortable enlargement. Choosing uncomfortable enlargement means facing the fear, the work, finishing what you've started, writing the books, shooting the films, growing the businesses, pubbing your art more than anyone else's. It means venturing into uncharted territory, both internally and externally. Uncomfortable enlargement means building courage and practicing patience and taking your gifts seriously. It means action on your own behalf. It's not going to be easy. Doing is uncomfortable. Commitment is uncomfortable. Accountability is uncomfortable. Any endeavor that requires a piece of flesh is uncomfortable. But it's the only way we start a new sentence that eventually builds a paragraph over and over, filling the page, our lives, until the chapter changes. So every day, give yourself the permission to pick up the pen and go to work on the life that no one could ever write you. I love you, I love you, I love you. You're beautiful, you're smart, you're funny. You're everything that you think you don't measure up to people to be. No one's smarter than you, no one's better than you. You can do anything you set your mind to. This is just a reminder for you to look back on a couple months from now, a couple weeks from now, tomorrow. But continue to strive. Everything that you write down will come to fruition eventually. And the opinions of others, the thoughts of others, I know for the people you love, you carry that on your back as a weight, but those are things that eventually people, you know, people really don't think about you that much. 
um, most of the time. And they'll be able to accept the decisions you make and the people you love if they love you. So don't worry too much about that. I trust you. Whew. Over and out. We'll do an update soon. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I was gonna use this, but <laughs> I already have something hooked up. I'm not even gonna do this to y'all. These are always gonna end with me posing the question to you because I very much so want to know what your answer to this question would be. If you had to write a letter to your younger self preparing them for this year, what would you say? And what version of yourself are you writing to? I always find that interesting as well. What version of ourself needed to hear it? the most? Or what version do you feel like, you know, might have even listened? So for me, that was me on the cusp of 30. I think it was very much so in a space where I would have been receptive. I can't wait to dive into every single one of your responses. I will be in the comments reading all of them. And I will see you on question number two, letter number two, video number two. Chat soon. Mm -hmm.